Welcome to my channel, KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. Today I'm going to make a delicious, very easy British dessert that originated in the 1500s and uses only three ingredients. This recipe has been adapted to be My Sugar Free Lemon Posset. I wanted to share this lemon posset with you because everyone in my family who has tried it absolutely loved the velvety creamy texture that's halfway between kind of a mousse and a custard, but even better. And the taste is a lovely refreshing lemony tartness that is perfectly balanced with a tiny bit of sweetness. Before continuing, I want to mention that I'm dedicating this delicious dessert to my mom who absolutely love lemon desserts of all kinds, and I'm sure this would have been one of them. On September 8th, it would have been her birthday, so this is for you, Mama. And to learn more about the long history of lemon posset and a few interesting facts about this dessert, please watch the video all the way to the end. By watching the video all the way through, it really does help my channel. The macronutrient ratio for this sugar-free lemon posset is 10.5 to 1 with 5.3 grams of total carbs, 0.5 grams of dietary fiber resulting in 4.8 grams of net carbs per 123 grams serving. As I mentioned in the title, to make this lemony posset dessert, all you need is three ingredients, lemons, sweetener, and heavy whipping cream. Make sure your heavy whipping cream is at least 35% fat. In parts of Europe, it's much higher and that will work perfectly as well. Now let's get started to make this dessert. The first thing I do is zest the lemon and you can use a microplane, but I actually find using the small holes on the box grater much easier. And because we need the lemon juice, the next thing to do is squeeze the juice from the lemon. But before proceeding, please strain the juice. You want only the juice and no pulp. It's very important to remove all of the pulp. And it's also very important that you use fresh lemon juice and not the bottled stuff. Not only will it work better, but it will taste better. It's now time to pour the heavy whipping cream into a saucepan. And the next thing I do is add the finely ground or confectioner powdered sweetener. This is better than granulated because by using powdered sweetener, it will ensure you don't have the grittiness in the posset. And lastly, add the lemon zest and stir or whisk to combine. Place your saucepan on your stove top, which is set to medium low heat. For this recipe, I highly recommend that you stay very close to the stove because you need to stir frequently while the cream is heating and coming to a light boil. And what you need to do is cook until the sweetener has completely dissolved and you've noticed that some of the cream in the pot has evaporated. Not a lot, but just a bit. I have found that after the cream comes to a light bubbly stage, it's about five or so minutes that you need to cook. After which, remove the saucepan from the stove top. Now, as your posset is cooling, remember to stir frequently. This will prevent a skin from forming on the surface. At this point, just set the bowl aside. You want the cream mixture to cool to room temperature and it should take about 15 to 20 minutes. When the cream has cooled, the next step is to slowly pour in the lemon juice while stirring constantly. Then continue stirring for a while to ensure that the cream and the lemon are perfectly homogeneously combined. And pass the liquid mixture through a fine mesh sieve into a clean bowl. What you're doing is removing all of the lemon zest. Now some people do leave the lemon zest for a more textured posset. However, we prefer the very luxurious smoothness instead. So that's why I strain to remove the lemon zest. That's all the cooking part to this recipe. The next step is to pour the liquid posset into serving dishes or glasses. To ensure that each of my servings weigh the same, as you see, I do use a food skill to be as accurate as I can. Now, here you have an option. You can use a tea towel or light cloth placed over all of your glasses or serving dishes, but do not use cling wrap because cling wrap will keep the moisture in and form droplets that will mar the surface of your posset, and it doesn't look really good. Alternatively, if you'll be serving it in a few hours, you don't even need a towel. 
this pasta does need to be transferred to your refrigerator and let cool for a minimum of four to six hours in order for the acidic acid from the lemon and the fat of the cream to set naturally. And as I said, four to six hours, but I actually like to leave my pasta in the refrigerator overnight. Not only am I sure that the pasta will be set perfectly, but the lemon taste will also develop during that time. Pasta is a really great dessert because you can make it two or three days ahead or store it in the fridge for two or three days. You don't have to do this, but when you're ready to serve, there are several ways to garnish the pasta. I really prefer to keep things simple, so I garnish with a little sprinkle of lemon zest and then place about one tablespoon of blueberries in the center, like this. If you don't like blueberries or want an alternative garnish, garnish with any other berry of your choice. Another berry that I think works really well are raspberries. The lemon and the raspberries complement each other very nicely. Pasta can also be garnished or served with a thin wafer cookie such as an almond cookie or shortbread cookie. I will leave links in the description box to my favorite cookies. It's unfortunate, pasta is not a well-known dessert outside of England, but I think if you love lemon and lemon desserts and give this a try, I'm sure that this lemon pasta may become a favorite dessert of yours. And now it's time for a brief history of pasta. Posset was first mentioned in the 1500s. The Oxford Dictionary traces the first appearance of the word posset to the 15th century. It's translated from Latin vocabulary, and here's the list of the words. Posset is also mentioned in the 1460 Book of Nature, written by John Russell, where he writes about various dishes and ingredients in his words that close a man's stomach, including posset. At this time, the posset was a dessert as well as a drink made from curdled milk, sugar, and sometimes also included cinnamon and star anise, and alcohol. The most commonly used alcohol were sack, which was a sweet ale or sherry. Although posset was used to remedy stomach problems, it was also used more commonly for colds and fevers. In 1620, there's a record in the Journal of House and Lords that King Charles I was given a pasta drink by his physician. When the pasta was served as a beverage, it was kept warm and made in a special cup rather like a teapot so that the liquid could be drunk beneath the foam that formed on the surface. As I mentioned, the pasta has a very interesting long history. In the Elizabethan era, Shakespeare mentions pasta several times in a few of his plays. These are not in the correct order, but in the play Macbeth, Lady Macbeth uses poisoned pasta to drug the guards outside of King Duncan's quarters, which is in Act 2, Scene 2. And here's the quote. Shakespeare also mentions pasta in Hamlet, Act 1, Scene 5, where he writes the following. Shakespeare writes of pasta's medical properties and that it is made of curds. In the play The Merry Wives of Windsor, Act 5, Scene 5. Shakespeare also writes that possets were served as dessert. And by the time we reach the 18th century, the recipe for posset was modified using milk, thickened with biscuits, and sometimes bread, egg yolk, or almonds. And sometimes sack was also added when posset was served as a drink, especially at weddings to toast the newlyweds. Then we have another innovation as noted in the book written in 1769 by Elizabeth Raffold in her book Experienced English Housekeeper. The interesting change in her recipe was the introduction and use of lemons. This original version of posset fell out of favor for a couple hundred years and was introduced in the 19th century as a cool dessert made with cream, sugar, and citrus. Fast forward to another hundred years and we're in the 20th century which introduces us to the version of posset we actually enjoy today. This 20th century version of posset has a velvety texture and a balance of lemon tartness and sweetness, which is the version I've shown here. The last historical fact I would like to share with you about posset is that lemon posset was a favorite recipe and served often at Buckingham Palace because both Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth very much liked this tasty and refreshing dessert. 
In fact, lemon posset was also served at their wedding dinner. In conclusion, I hope you will try this surprisingly simple and delicious dessert. And do let me know if you find the recipe and the history section interesting or useful. Thank you very much for watching my video. Please come back when I post my next video. And until then, have a very happy and healthy day. Cheers!